this is a blood film. Um, it's always wise to avoid either end of a blood film because the cells are very sparse here, very clustered together here, so it's always good to go somewhere in the middle. So as we zoom in a bit we can start to see the detail of the cells here and there are lots of cells that are pale pink. These are the red blood cells. They look paler in the centre because the red blood cell is a biconcave disc and this is to allow them to flow through the smaller vessels and capillaries. They need to kind of fold over on themselves a little bit to fit through. So um, these biconcave discs are, um, in terms of their morphology, if we were to look at those closer, there's no detail that can be seen in here. These cells just carry haemoglobin. There's no nucleus, there's no organelles present, okay, which accounts for their sort of bland sort of appearance here. That's the red blood cells, which make up the biggest cell number. In amongst the red blood cells, which are the most numerous cell type in bloods, we can see some little dots which just look like bits of rubbish or extra bits. But these are platelets uh, and these are chips of cells which um, are in the bone marrow. These cells are called megakaryocytes and platelets are simply um, portions of these cells that um, move throughout the blood and have um, organelles but no nucleus present. And these uh, are not active uh, in the normal situation within the blood but are able to become activated and clot when the blood is breached or in the case of thrombus formation in a vessel. A thrombus is a blood clot that's formed within a vessel and this happens when the blood is exposed to tissue components uh, such as when the endothelium of a blood vessel is breached. If we have a look at the white blood cells, these are the ones um, that appear purple on the stain. Let's have a look at a few of them. There are two types of uh, white blood cell. Uh, one is called the granulocyte um, series um, and these are comprised of neutrophils, basophils and eosinophils and there are uh, agranulocytes which have no granules in their cytoplasm and they are lymphocytes and monocytes and uh, rather unusually and luckily we have in this field of view all five of those cell types. Uh, white blood cells make up only about 1% of the population of blood cells uh, and you can see that here represented. So there's lots and lots of red blood cells but only very few white blood cells. So if we have a look at the most numerous cell type in the granulocyte series first, these are the neutrophils. Uh, neutrophils are sometimes called uh, polymorphonuclear leukocytes or PMNs. Uh, that's because the nucleus has several different lobes to it um, and so it's, it's a multiple shaped nucleus or polymorph. That's one, that's another one and there's one over here and one over here as well. They don't immediately look like they've got granules in their cytoplasm, although if you look at the cytoplasm it does look a little bit granular. Um, and that's because the granules in there are neutrally staining. They don't stain very positively with either the haemotoxylin or eosin component of the stain, and so they're neutral granules, hence the name neutrophil. Neutrophils are most heavily involved in acute inflammation. The other granulocyte we can see here is a, another um, cell with a, a lobed nucleus. In this case, the purple is the nucleus, and you can see one lobe here and a bit of a connecting bit and another lobe over here. And this is an eosinophil, and it has very dense pink, dark pink staining granules uh, in the cytoplasm. And those pink granules are called eosinophilic because they're, um, the eosin part of the H and E dye is attracted to them. Um, giving them a very dark pink granular staining and these cells are involved in uh, parasitic infections and also involved in al allergic reactions as well. If we have a look at the final um, white blood cell, um, this one is a basophil and in this case there are very few of these in the blood. This is there's only about 1% um, of white blood cells that are basophils. And uh, this one is spottable as a basophil because it's got so many granules that the nucleus is completely obscured. The nucleus in this cell would be a lobed nucleus also, but it has, um, in this case, large purple granules 
that's staying the same colour as the, the um, nucleus. Basophils are called basophils because they attract the same bit of the dye as the nucleus, which is haematoxylin, which is a basic, uh, basic dye. So they're called basophils. We now look at the last two cell types, the A granulocytes, which, as the name suggests, have no granules. In this case, we have the most common one, which is a lymphocyte, we can see here. A lymphocyte is a small cell. If you look at these other ones, they're a great deal bigger than a red blood cell, whereas um, the lymphocyte isn't really that much bigger than a, a red blood cell. And it's quite notable that because of its nucleus, takes up almost the entire cytoplasm, um, and it's just got a small rim or crescent of cytoplasm visible. That's how you identify a, a lymphocyte, and these are involved in immune reactions. There are many different types of lymphocytes, but we can't tell just by looking at them which is which. And the final cell type we have is the monocyte. It's quite a large cell um, and has uh, a pale cytoplasm because there are no granules here. And it has a nucleus that is the shape of a kidney bean. Um, and that is a monocyte. And monocytes are also involved uh, in fighting infection. These are in small numbers in the blood. You find monocytes in tissue, and once the monocytes leave the blood they're called macrophages and you find them in greater numbers in the tissue as macrophages than as monocytes in the blood. So in summary, the uh, blood film that we're looking at here contains uh, mostly red blood cells with a small number of white blood cells which are split into two groups, those with granules, neutrophils, eosinophils and basophils and ones with no granules lymphocytes and monocytes um, and platelets uh, as well. <laughs> platelets were a bit of an afterthought there, weren't they? <laughs>